Web application security is a huge part of penetration testing, and in general, this topic can be a little bit overwhelming for beginners. Uniscan is a scanner that allows us to find vulnerabilities that's super easy for beginners to learn, and we'll take a look at it on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Web applications are everywhere. They run services on websites, and they also control the access to Internet of Things devices on local networks. Breaking into them is a big priority for hackers and penetration testers, but for beginners, the available tools out there for scanning can be a little bit confusing or overwhelming. Now, tools like Nikto allow a lot of control, but they also can be a little bit confusing for beginners who just want to set a couple flags and get a lot of information about a target. Instead, we can use something called Uniscan, which is perfect for beginners because not only does it offer an attractive GUI, it also offers the ability to pull a lot of information with just a couple simple flags. Now, you can run Uniscan just on Kali Linux because it's included by default, so you don't really need to do anything if you have the full install. If you have Debian or another Kali Linux system that's maybe the light version, then you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description to learn more about how to install it. Once you have a target that you're allowed to attack, and you also have a system that's fully updated, then we can begin. To get started with Uniscan, the first step will be, if you're on Kali Linux, to make sure that you have it installed. To do this, you can type in a fresh ter terminal window, Uniscan, tack h. Here, if it's installed, we should see a list of all the available flags that we can set. And you can also see some examples, which will help us understand exactly how we can format this in order to do certain things. Now, fortunately, this is a lot easier than some other tools. And you can see it's very straightforward in terms of setting static checks, dynamic checks, uh, stress tests, and other sorts of tools to enable us to locate various types of web application vulnerabilities. Now, if you don't have it, then you can simply type apt install uniscan. And you should go ahead and install it, as well as all the necessary libraries included. Now, since I'll, I already have it, nothing happened. But if I didn't have it, then all these would be installed, and I would be able to proceed with using it. Now, let's take a look at the Nullbyte article we're referencing, written by DRD. So this is going to go through all the various flags that uh, we can use with this and explain the way that we can use each one to dig up more interesting information about, uh, let's say, uh, the web banner, or we want to learn about the ports that are open. We can even do some things that are like an Nmap scan that will then pour into a further scan that doubles down on anything we located in the first. So these kind of build off of each other if you use a whole bunch of flags and then allow them to uh, kind of work in tandem. So we're going to go ahead and run a couple different scans just to show what this looks like so you understand how these scans work and the kind of information that they'll retrieve. Now, going back to our help page, we can see that some of the more useful options that we can set are web fingerprinting, server fingerprinting. I'm not going to set any of the um, uh, Bing or Google searching, but I will go ahead and enable stress testing, static checks, dynamic checks. We're going to take a look at the robot.txt file, which will give us information about maybe which kinds of user agents will allow us to access different parts of the site. And then we'll also do file checks to see if we can access any files that might not maybe supposed to be public to uh, the internet. So we can also see if there are any directories that we can access that also might be pub public when they're not supposed to be. And this might allow us to do things like traversal attacks or even execute files on the remote server. So we're going to set a whole bunch of these. And of course, we're going to use our favorite target, Priceline.com, who unapologetically stranded me in Las Vegas. Now, as you can see, we're setting a whole bunch of these, including the TACF uh, list of URLs to get, which will give us a good initial seed of various URLs um, underneath Priceline.com that will let us then subsequently scan for vulnerabilities. So we're not just scanning the root URL. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we can do. And then we'll check out how easy it is to run this with the graphic user interface as well. Immediately, we can see that we're dealing with a varnished server. We can get the IP address, and then we can also see information about web services, including that they have a mobile page because it responds to different user agents with different versions of the website. 
Now this is useful to know because it's an additional attack surface, and if we were an attacker, knowing we have a mobile version versus a regular version can give us maybe some additional vulnerabilities on the mobile site that we would never see if we were requesting it with just a, a user agent from you know, a desktop computer. Here we also get some Whois information about who actually owns this, when the expiration date is, and all the various other information we can pull from a Whois request. We'll also get ping information, a trace route that'll give us some information about which path packets take to get to and from the server that is behind Priceline.com, and then we'll find some information once we load all the modules about any vulnerabilities that might exist on the servers we find. We can also see that they use google.com as their mail server, and we can even say uh, some more stuff with VeriSign, uh, as well as some interesting information about internal services, DocuSign, GlobalSign, and some other third-party services that we could potentially use as a way into the Priceline system. Now we've loaded a whole bunch of different subdirectories from the list of robots.txt and the sitemap.xml. So we're gonna start running these modules against the various things we've discovered, including crawlers and different plugins to learn different uh, directory vulnerabilities, uh, backup files, and other sorts of vulnerabilities that are known to this particular crawler. Now that the scan is complete, we can take a look at the report at this HTML file that's been saved. And we can also take a look at the GUI that makes this so simple any beginner can get started by just ticking a couple boxes. Now to access this, we can just use the uniscan command, but instead we'll add a tac GUI. Now this will open a separate window and we'll be able to enter information in this handy uh, GUI box that allows us to check whatever we want and we don't even need to uh, go ahead and do flags. Now this is really convenient for beginners because obviously it's a very friendly interface and if we want, we'll go ahead and pick, uh, let's do gadget hacks as our target. So we'll take this and we will drop it into our GUI window. And then we can select, let's say we want to do a check directory, check files, uh, web fingerprint, and a server fingerprint. So to run this, we just hit start scan. And then you can see that all of this is very helpfully uh, output here so we can see the status. And when it's done, we can click on open log file in order to learn the status of all of our scans. Now that our scan is complete, we can review the information that was gathered by clicking on open log file. This will open a log of all the various URLs that we've scanned, and we can scroll to the bottom to see the most recent scan that we've done, and see, for example, all the different URLs we scraped and all the different files that we found. Now, it's important to note that some websites might set options that basically set it to reply to URLs that don't exist. This can frustrate scanners and make it more difficult for hackers to figure out what's really behind all these different uh, URLs that we're guessing at and trying to resolve and seeing if they do or not. Now, while some of these might be legitimate, you can see that in some other ones, it'll slow down or attempt to confuse the scanner with this sort of tactic. So be aware that everything that comes back as being discovered might not always really exist, depending on who operates the website, because I know that Nullbyte operates as protection and, and can frustrate certain types of scans. Now, you can also see that we learned a lot about some things like the load balancer, the uh, IP addresses that it takes to get to and from the server at Gadget Hacks, and all this would be useful information to anybody who is looking to plan an attack or otherwise audit this system. Uniscan is incredibly easy to use, but because of that, it's important to differentiate it from passive recon tools. Some tools just passively listen and don't allow you to be detected, and this is definitely not one of them. So if you're scanning an external website, like a service that gets a lot of traffic, it probably won't be noticed. But if you're scanning something internal, like your company's server or something like that, it will definitely be noticed, because these scans can be quite aggressive depending on what flags you set. Because of the ease of running an aggressive scan, you should definitely make sure you're scanning something you have permission to scan, because otherwise this can prompt an uncomfortable conversation with your company's IT department. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you run into any problems, you can check out the article on Nullbyte for more information. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, you can send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.